family. I'm Jessica and I want to welcome you to our online campus. If you are new and interested in getting connected with us, send us a quick message or fill out our connect card on our website. We'd love to hear from you. As we get ready to worship today, I want to invite you to do three things. Engage, greet, and give. First, engage. Engaging with an online worship gathering is a unique experience, so here are a few ways we've found to help get the most out of it. Be fully present, put away your other devices and distractions, get out your Bible and notepad, and settle in. Worship, don't just watch. God wants to meet us right where we are as we lean into His presence. So let's worship like He's right here with us in our homes, instead of just listening to the music and message. Contribute. Take a minute to share what Jesus is teaching you. You can do this in the comments or reach out to a friend and just process God's invitations and challenges to you from today's gathering. Next, greet someone. Take a minute right now to say hello in the comments, introduce yourself and where you are watching from. We have people connecting with us from around the world and we love seeing our online community get to know each other. Finally, give. We can't thank you enough for all those who have supported the work of the gospel through the Plant Church. As you give, you allow the work of the gospel to continue. We want to thank all of you who have given to the Plant Church, and we want to invite all those who haven't yet to give to the work of the gospel through our website, theplantchurch.org give. It's great to have you with us. Let's worship together. I want to thank all of you for joining us for our online Eve Before Christmas Eve service. We are so excited to be with you this evening as we come to celebrate and remember the birth of Christ. 
We're going to do something really unique tonight, is we're going to actually look at a Christmas carol. There's actually another word for Christmas carols. They're called Christmas hymns. And oftentimes when you sing these Christmas carols or Christmas hymns, there's, there's two schools of, of hymns. One is talking about the, the mystery of Christmas, such as O Little Town of Bethlehem. But then there's a whole other group that, that teaches the deep theology of the Christmas narrative. We're going to do the second tonight. We're going to look at one that, that teaches deep theology. The carol, the hymn is called, O Come All Ye Faithful. It's a very interesting carol because there were over eight different authors. And these individuals had put together a song and they kept growing it and growing it and building it and building it. And then in 1751, it was John Francis Wade that published it. And the English version that we sing doesn't have eight different verses there's only three. And as I was preparing and studying and getting ready, all I kept singing to myself was, Oh, come all ye faithful. And as I studied this, this carol, this hymn, there, there were three movements. There was a, a, a verse of invitation, one of declaration, and one of celebration. And so as we've been studying faith, get lit, reigniting our faith this Christmas season, here's what we want to do this evening. We want to look at one more group of individuals whose faith led them to experience the faithfulness of God. Church, it's in our faith that we faithfully get to experience the faithfulness of God. Let's pray together. Jesus, it is our desire and our purpose this evening to gather to celebrate you and you alone. I ask you for your gift of the Holy Spirit to be with us in the studio and in their homes, that, that you would be present and we would sense you, we would know that you are with us as we celebrate Jesus. So God, use this hymn, this carol, to take, her to, take us to deeper places with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 8. We read in verse 1, At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus declared that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. The setting was a small town of Bethlehem where a young couple had to go for the census. This young couple delivered a child, the child, the Christ child, the Messiah, the Son of God. And yet, that small little village was sound asleep. And so there was an invitation to a certain group of people that, that God knew was going to be awake. Even though the village was asleep, he knew that, that in a field nearby that there were going to be a group of individuals who would be awake, who would be alert, and who would be ready to respond. The invitation were to shepherds. Shepherds were a completely unique group of individuals. They were outsiders, misfits, an unlikely audience for the Christ child. But they were ready and alert and willing. These individuals were very interesting in the fact that, that their vocation provided for the sacrifice for the people to God. And so even though they were outsiders and misfits and, and out in the fields, they had taken care of the sheep 
for those in the village and in Jerusalem to use to be offered as a sacrifice for their sins to God. I find that very, very unique. But what I also find very unique about the Advent message is that it reminds us that the kingdom of God is not often for the noble. It's for those that Jesus would call the least of these, the misfits, the outsiders, the not well resourced. The shepherds were an unlikely audience, yet they were a picture of those who were ready to receive the invitation of God. Joyful and triumphant, oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the of angels Oh, come let us adore Him Oh, come let us adore Him Oh, come let us adore Him Christ As we continue on in the passage, verse 9 through 14 reads this. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, The Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heavens and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. The shepherds were in the field and an angel appears and and makes a declaration. And when you begin to read the Christmas narratives, there was always a divine declaration by God to humanity. We see this all throughout the Christmas narrative. We see this with Zechariah in the temple. We see this with Mary. And then we see it again with Joseph. And now we see it with the shepherds. That a vast host of angels was about to arrive. But before the vast host of angels arrived, the one angel showed up. And he made a declaration. And he said this to the shepherds. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David. The angel had come to declare that the one, the Messiah, yes, the Lord, has come to earth. And then all of a sudden, I I love how the author says, the Lord's army appears. And the angels rejoice, declaring that God has come. The angels declare the arrival of Christ. We declare right now that Christ is seated at the right hand of God.
verse 16 reads this. They, the shepherds, hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds immediately went to find that baby. The shepherds went to celebrate. They went with a purpose to celebrate the child, the Christ child, the one who would be the good shepherd. And when they arrived, there was God. God in flesh appearing. God in flesh appearing. Emmanuel, which means God among us. God with us. This child was a royalty of royalty. And yet, he was lying in a feeding trough. No fanfare, no servants, just a bunch of animals and a handful of people. Tonight, we are invited to declare and to celebrate just like the shepherds that Christ has been born. And what I love about this celebration is that, that right after the shepherds had celebrated, this is what they did. It says this in verse 17. After seeing him, after celebrating him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Tonight, yes, we are celebrating. But many of you have played the role of the shepherd throughout this year. Many of you have, have been invited and, and have been declaring who Christ is throughout this year. Many of you have been sharing your faith, giving people the opportunity to know Christ as you make him known. For those who have done so, I believe your excitement is that of the shepherds. Fearlessly faithful. In closing, I want to light the Christ candle. And I want to invite you to light a candle as well, a symbol of the Christ candle. Candles are a sign of light, direction, pointing a person forward. And I believe faith is much like a candle. It's what burns within us, gives us hope in a dark world, leads us forward when we feel like we can't move it all. But here's what's so unique about our faith. Our faith is not just based on anything. Our faith is based on and built on the divine. It's grounded on the declaration of God's faithfulness. It's founded on God's love. For God so loved the world. No matter who you are, in faith, God has invited you to know him and be known by him through Christ Jesus. Here's my invitation tonight. Here's my invitation to you. Here's my invitation to us. Oh, come all ye faith-filled. Because it is in faith that you get to know the faithful God. Oh, come all ye faith-filled. Together, let's come 
and behold him. And oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Cry, Lord. Cry. stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error high.
we want to thank you for joining us for this Eve before Eve Christmas celebration. Let me pray for us. Jesus, tonight, it has been our desire to declare that you are the Son of God. Tonight, we have come to celebrate you and you alone. I ask you that as we move into tomorrow and the next day, that just as you have invited us to know you, we would invite others to know you as well. Tonight is all about you, Jesus, the Christ child, the Messiah, the Lord of Lords. And so we say thank you. We say thank you. And we do so through celebration. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Plan family, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And remember this, we are praying with you and for you. Merry Christmas.